This is our seventh annual lightning lap competition at Virginia International Raceway. What we do is take all the brand new sports cars and bring them out here and see what kind of lap time they can throw down. From time to time we do special classes. Last time we did SUVs. So this time around we're doing cop cars. This is the Chevrolet Caprice PPV. The other car we have here is the Dodge Charger police vehicle. The Ford Crown Victoria is gone, it's dead, no longer. That's, that was the ubiquitous cop car for years and years. So Chevy's getting back into the police car game with the Caprice. It's basically just an old Pontiac G8. It's been updated a little bit, the wheelbase is stretched, the trunk is longer, but it's made in the same factory that the G8 was down in Australia. It's, it's worlds better in terms of the chassis and the structure. It just drives a lot better than the Crown Vic, but it has, it has the same kind of old school American feel where, you know, again, it's front heavy, it's riding on tires that don't have a lot of grip, especially compared to you know, real sports cars. I, I love driving this on the track. You have almost zero expectation for it to do anything fun, but it's such a challenge that there's almost no grip. So you have to really work to get it to go around the corner and it's, it's very sensitive to weight transfer. The thing I like about this is you really feel like you're getting it moving around just like in an old car chase. When you try to push the car, it, it doesn't really want to play along. You know, this car has the 6.2 liter V8. It's just your classic Chevy small block and it really goes in a straight line. The lesson, I think, is that if you get into a high-speed chase on a road course, the, the cops are never going to catch you if you're in a real sports car. This car has great brakes. That was I went into the first corner and expecting the worst because it's this really big, heavy car that you would never guess had great brakes, and uh, I didn't brake late enough. They're always there. The lights and sirens are, are one of the best things, and especially the PA, you have, you have this microphone and you can say whatever you want, broadcast out in front of you. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of car you can spend all day in. As, as long as you're not on a track, it's, it's got a flat seat to you know, accommodate your utility belt and your bulletproof vest, so it's made for cruising, it's not made for lapping. This interior is, um, it's a little more cramped. You've got you know, the shifter's moved over right here to your knee. Even without the computer, there's just, um, you know, the console comes right up to the seat. I, you know, I have to give exterior styling to the, to the Charger. It looks a little more menacing. You know, you're gonna get that horrible, horrible chill when you see one in the rearview mirror with the lights on. And I feel like the Caprice, maybe people aren't used to it, but if you see that coming up on you, you go, what is that? The Dodge Charger police car, it's just way more sinister than the Caprice. You get in it and immediately it's just kind of like, all right, let's go persecute some hippies. Coming in second is the Chevrolet Caprice PPV with a lap time of three minutes, 23 seconds flat. <laughs> Top speed, 120.9 miles per hour. The Caprice was at the bottom of most of the sector times. In sector one, for example, the Caprice's meager grip, only 0.75G, left it four tenths of a second behind the charger. The Caprice's lap time is hemmed in by electronics, an overly aggressive stability control system that, once it wakes up, all but parks the car and blows your lap time. There is some life in the Caprice's chassis though, as evidenced in the downhill sector three, where the Caprice enters at the same speed as the charger, but exits 4.5 miles an hour faster and does the whole sector half a second quicker. This year's winner in the LL Oink class is the Dodge Charger Pursuit with a lap time of three minutes, 17.8 seconds, and a top speed of 121.9 miles per hour. A cop who knows how to drive this thing right could run down and arrest a grid of spec Miatas. Plenty of road hugging weight and a suspension that doesn't mind riding the curbs gave the Charger the 12th fastest time in sector two. Faster than the BMW M5, M6, and the Audi RS5. The Charger is the second heaviest car at this year's Lightning Lap, but the 370 horsepower Hemi V8 makes up for a lot of that. The automatic transmission has a column shifter with a toggle switch for manual control, 
but it's useless on the track unless you want to take one hand off the wheel. The Charger is faster around the track than the Caprice, but it doesn't feel faster. It's not as much fun. The brakes give out pretty easily. There's not a lot of stopping power in them. And the, the front end is just really, really unresponsive. The Charger definitely feels stronger in a straight line than the Caprice. It just pulls a lot harder. This thing really doesn't like to go around corners. You're always kind of fighting it. It's just not as much fun to drive. But it's also, it's got comfort. It feels bigger. The cowl's a little higher, so visibility's probably worse. You know, you won't notice any of those protesters you're running over. I think the interior here is a little nicer than the Caprice. It's got this really good steering wheel leather. It also has a USB and aux input, you know, because police deserve to listen to their iPods too. Exterior styling, the Charger was mean anyway. You put it in black and white with a light bar on it, and it, it's just trouble. If you see one of these new cop cars in your rear view mirror, your best bet is to just pull over. You might be able to outrun this car, but you can't outrun the radio. The best part about this year's special category is that it's probably our only chance to drive these cars without facing serious jail time. Austin with Car and Driver. Thanks for watching.